Hey everyone, it's Keely here for Soy and Shay, and thank you so much for joining me for today's soap making video, which is one of the Patreon design soaps. If you're new around here, what I do each month is ask my patrons for a certain criteria to go into a soap, and then I make it do a video and share it here on YouTube. Now for this month I asked them for a soap technique that they'd like to see me use and I put everyone's suggestion into a soapy jar, drew one out and it came from Lillian. Now Lillian doesn't have her own business as of yet but if she does start one I'll make sure to update the description box so you can go and check it out. But what she wanted to see me do was a column pour and I was really excited about doing this one because it had only been the week before that I had actually been thinking I should do another column pour soap because I hadn't done one um, in years. So I was really excited to do, get this one out. I went through all my fragrances to find the perfect one out, picked out my colours and we're going to go and see how I make the column pour soap. Let's go. All right, let's do this soap. It's been a while since I have done a column pour, so hopefully it all goes well, and hopefully the fragrance oil I have chosen to use behaves the same way it did the last time I use it. But first of all, what we'll do is we'll get our lye water mixed in with our oils, and then we'll split it up for some colors. split this pot up into four colors. I have got some, can you see it? There it is, some chartreuse green. I have got my favorite eminence purple. I also have some pumpkin orange. And then in my fourth container, I have some latte. So I'm gonna get this big pot, hopefully split up. So we've got our colors hopefully evenly split out. Let's get them all mixed in. I'm gonna try and do this as much by hand as possible because I do want this to stay fluid throughout my whole pour. Okay, so hopefully I've got all the colors poured up from off the base. I'm going to add in my fragrance, and this is one that was sent to me a couple of years ago now when I had all those troubles with some fragrance oils that I got. So this is actually an Aussie Soap Supplies fragrance oil called Autumn Fig Harvest, and it's got notes of apple, orange, cinnamon, and pine, and the description does say that you're meant to get sort of a feeling of coffee or a um, sense of coffee in it but I still I think I even said it in the last um, last time I used this fragrance so I definitely don't get coffee out of the aroma at all but I do remember it playing nicely <laughs> so that's why well I went for this one plus we are in um, in autumn here in Australia, well supposedly, we had such a mild summer compared to previous years in the area that I'm in. Um, most days were only about 30 or 31 degrees Celsius, which really isn't very hot for summer. Um, previous years we'd been getting 35 up to 38, 39 degrees, so it was really, really mild um, summer this year and then We've hit what we call autumn here because um, we do are slightly different to how the rest of the world does it. We simplify it and change it on the first 
of every three months. So on the 1st of March, we went into autumn and we suddenly got a little bit of a heat wave. <laughs> it was like, nope, mother nature, you missed your chance for making us hot. But we are actually officially now in autumn. So I thought we'd go for some of the autumn colors, the autumn fragrance and see how we go. And because I knew it played so nicely last time, you watch, I've just jinxed myself. I decided we'll do this one so that um, I can get this pour done. So let me finish getting this orange one all mixed in. Then I will grab the mold. Okay, so we're going for the slab today. And I was really pleased when this one came up because I'd been thinking, I haven't used this tool in forever. I saw it on Amazon one day. It was when Amazon kind of first really came here to Australia and I spotted it and I ordered it and I've never seen it again since. It's just like a little marble structure. <laughs> and it was actually sold as a column pour mold um, on, let's go brown first. And I've never seen another one since. I've never seen this particular one on Amazon since either. And I've only ever used it once. So I was pretty pleased when this suggestion came up. So all I'm doing is I've put the column in the middle of my mold here. And as you can see, I am just alternating between my colors and just trying to pour the same amount each time whether I do or don't, it's a whole other matter. But I'm gonna keep going like this until we end up with all of this soap batter in here. And um, hopefully, hopefully it stays this fluid the whole time. And I do know that this one smells really, really good once it's gone through its saponification process. So before I finish pouring in the rest of the orange and the green, I am going to take this one out. And it just means I've got some orange and green to put in the center of this one in case it comes out a little bit too muddy. Now, I said I've got this special one or this piece of stone to go in here, but you can use things like water bottles or anything that is heavy enough to stay in the middle of your soap so it doesn't float up when you are pouring your soaps and there are heaps of videos out there where people show the different things they've used to make these column molds i just really like the star and the pattern that it makes i'm going to finish pouring my green and my orange into the middle here so it doesn't look too muddied so that's all of the green out and let's get this. And I'm absolutely loving how these colors have come together. Let's pour the orange in the middle. And one of my other patrons did suggest once I actually drew this one out that I um, do a spin swirl on it as well. Now, because Lillian didn't actually ask for me to do the column pour with a spin swirl, I won't do it on this one, but I am tempted to do another column pour and see how that's going to come out. But what I will do, because it's sort of one thing that a lot of people do, I'm going to grab myself a stainless steel chopstick and I am just going to pop it all the way down to the bottom and I'm just going to do lines in and out all the way around. Whoops. Oh, 
hopefully this is going to give it some interest when we go to cut it. Pull it straight up and I'm going to leave it like that because the way we're going to cut this is going to be very different to how I cut my other loaves. Not looking forward to cutting it because I know how many wasted bars I'm going to get but it should give a really interesting look on the inside. It's going to leave this one sit overnight and we'll be back very very shortly and we'll cut it open and I'll show you exactly how I'm going to cut this one into the bars. Okay, we are ready to cut into this soap. It smells absolutely amazing. The only thing is when we cut into this one, I'm not going to get my usual 30 bars out of this one because of the way it needs to be cut. It's one of the reasons I don't really do soaps this way too much anymore. What I'm first of all gonna do is cut this down into some logs, which I want my the width of my soap so let's get these ones done Ooh, it's looking nice on the inside let me bring that one up for you that is like that maybe we can cut one log differently and cut one one log the way it should be and we'll cut one the way i normally do if that makes sense <laughs> so normally what you would do is once we get that one through like so Ooh, that one's looking good as well. So this one should be the right size if I've done this right. Uh, no, I haven't. Oh, well, we've got a great big sample piece there. Ooh, oh dear. <laughs> so yeah, I'm definitely gonna not get the number of soap bars I should have because I should have turned this around the other way. My mold, it looks square, but it's actually got one centimetre difference. I really wasn't thinking when I asked for it to be made. I should have asked for it to be a little bit more rectangle so I knew which way round to put these. What I might do is we'll cut the middle one to the way that it should be cut. So we might just pop that one up there for a moment. So I'm going to bring my measurement down to six and a half. Let's pull that one out the way too. First thing I'm going to do, this is going to all seem very weird. I'm going to cut just a little piece off the end here so that we end up with a nice even edge. Very, very skinny bit because I really don't want to waste any more soap than I already have. So that's going to give a really interesting look. So what I will probably end up doing, so that I get the most possible bars out of this, I am going to cut the middle bar the way that it should traditionally be cut. And then I'm going to put all the other ones through on my um, bar cutter. I'm doing the middle one because you always get a really interesting pattern from out of the middle pieces here. So let's get this one cut into some blocks. calculated it right this way as well I should get hopefully four but no I think I did it the wrong way yeah definitely did it the wrong way so this one I'm going to cut into normal ones but we'll still do three blocks um, where I will cut it to show you how this one should be cut so let me go and grab the soap cutter and we'll go and have a look Okay, confession time. I forgot to turn the camera on when I started to cut these soaps. These are the three blocks that I cut in the funny size. And basically what I did is then took that block with the, the top and I turned it on its side and then put it onto my soap cutter and cut through. And this is what we end up with. So I end up with two quite hefty pieces cut off the side. And then that is the inside of the soap. And it is really, really pretty. And it's a sort of pattern that you don't get by doing hanger swirls and drop pours and that sort of thing. And what I love is that it goes all the way around every single side of the soap. And it is very, very pretty. 
um, here is another one I can't now remember which ones were the middle pieces I think that one was very close to the center of the soap there that is the other side and then I have that third block in fact this must have been the centerpiece because that's where it's a little bit it's not as defined with the pattern but it's still a very nice bar of soap it smells absolutely wonderful as well and I love the colors but as you can see from those three blocks that I cut I only got six bars of soap and then that was all of the leftover soap which is a pretty much another couple of bars of soap maybe one and a half bars of soap as soap ends um, so what I'm going to do with my other blocks is that I'm going to cut them as I normally would at any bar of soap now it's not going to give me that same beautiful pattern but it is going to give me 10 bars of soap now with the mold with that slab mold that I've got when I cut my soaps normally I would end up with 30 loaves of soap but if I was to cut these ones the same as them I don't actually only end up with 24 bars of soap so that's at least six bars of soap not including my usual end pieces that then become samples or end pieces to try and get rid of so I'm gonna cut this one normally and that is what you get if you actually cut it in a normal so again it does give you a really nice sort of pattern and again a pattern that you probably wouldn't be able to get if you were pouring into your mold even if you put a hanger through it I doubt you'd get that gorgeous pattern that it has given I love the layers of colors in there you're almost getting into a tiger stripe sort of swirl as well and there is those ones we're getting these are the center pieces here so there it is you've got much more of a tiger sort of stripe a sideways tiger stripe so you wouldn't even get your tiger stripe probably looking like that if you were to pour it straight into your mold but I am going to continue pour, cutting it this way because um, as I said I'm going to end up with a lot more bars I should end up with about 26 bars so I'll only end up losing because I get 10 out of a log like this and then I should get I'll get another two out of here so yeah I'll end up with 28 bars so I've literally lost two bars of soap out of this one oh, I better show you that one before putting it away so there is that one too this fragrance oil it has behaved so beautifully it smells really good it stayed nice and fluid um, it was as I said one of the ones that Aussie soap supplies sent to me after having all those really disastrous um, fragrance oils I had from off them a couple of years ago and they sent me these ones to try and they really have been um, very well performing the ones they sent and this one I definitely recommend it smells really good let's cut that one and there is that piece there so I still like the pattern it gives in fact that one's really nice really like that one there how that's gone um, but let me grab one of these from here and that is the inside there so they're at bay they are the same size block of soap I made sure to do that um, but either way you do get a beautiful pattern but cutting it this way you're gonna end up with more bars of soap I hope you've enjoyed coming along and watching how I made my column pour soap I do apologize for the um, error in my filming there um, if you did enjoy the video why not hit the thumbs up button and um, any comments down below and until the next video comes out I hope you have a good one and I will see you then bye